Welcome to chapter three, how we were loved. We are relational creatures. Humans are meant to be social. It's in our design. Our experiences during infancy play a major role in our ability to love and be loved because it's about what happened to us. As we covered in chapter two, being present to an infant is rewarding not only for the baby, but also for the caregiver as both get the release of the feel-good neurochemicals, dopamine and serotonin. Similarly, we can practice mindful movement, breath awareness, meditation, which can enhance the brain's capacity to utilize serotonin and dopamine. In this video, I wanted to speak about the foundation of our developing self and the qualities of discernment, known in Sanskrit as the word viveka. In the practice videos, we will explore movement and meditation from a heart-centered place. By bringing awareness inside first, we discover or enhance our values and passion, as well as our fears and grief. When we are unaware of these aspects of ourselves, they might end up getting triggered unconsciously in relationships. We might end up saying or doing things just because we were disconnected to what our internal selves were actually seeking, which is healthy connection. Think of this as cleaning house before things get moldy. This work prepares us to present our authentic self with our passions and vulnerabilities, with healthy boundaries and clear values, which are necessary to make meaningful and supportive connections. The lowest part of the brain develops first, the core regulatory networks. And when these CRNs include love and connection, it builds a foundation where a person's experience is built on felt safety. With felt safety, we have a framework for relating to others socially and being comfortable to explore the external world. It creates a home base for us to come back for immediate comfort and safety and reassurance. Just like when kids play tag, they create a base where they go for safety. Remember hearing, you can't tag me because I'm on base. Our brains need to keep coming back to a felt sense of safety. Now it's important to note here that there's a difference between being safe and feeling safe. A person who has experienced trauma may react in a way that communicates he or she does not feel safe, even if they are in a safe place. Through our yoga practice, we bring awareness to our internal sense of safety. So try this right now from standing, press into your right and then your left foot on whatever surface is underneath you. And breathe from the bottoms of your feet all the way through the top of your head. Can you sense how your feet are connected even to the earth beneath you? Now bend your knees a little bit, feel your hips over your feet. Now press and extend your heels and extend your legs. Allow your arms to float out to the sides. Breathe into your back body so it broadens and lengthens. Feel yourself taking up space and inhabiting your body. Feel the space between your fingers. Sense the wall behind you supporting you. Now lower your arms by your side. Rebend your knees and notice how your legs are grounding you. Now re-extend fully through the legs. Notice any sensations of lightness in and around your heart, your shoulders, your head. Our feet and our legs are our foundation. Think of this as the CRNs. Dr. Perry says, if anything disrupts the CRNs, all of the brain and body systems they influence can be adversely affected. The more grounded and secure we feel in our lower body, the lighter we can feel in our upper body. Now this doesn't mean that if we don't feel safe or we feel ungrounded that we cannot connect, but it could mean that we seek connection from a place of fear or insecurity. In fact, when we experience potential threat or harm, our immediate response is to flock or find a caring other. Think of a toddler that falls down. He may look to his caregiver first to see what kind of reaction the caregiver is having and then decide if he should cry or laugh. Let's think about our physical body sensations when we get triggered. So some examples might be tightness, hollowing at the chest or heart region, clenching the teeth or jaw, tight shoulders, tightness around the stomach, clenching of the fists, narrowing around the eyes, or maybe going numb, or maybe the opposite where you're shaking or quivering. These sensations prepare the body for action, fight, flight, or even freeze. And we need this response. Um, it's part of our survival, so it's not a bad thing. The trouble is when these sensations become unpredictable, uncontrollable, or extreme. 
And this is where, as Dr. Perry describes it, we experience the prolonged activation of the stress response. This leads to a sensitized stress response system. And when a person has a sensitized stress response system, they experience what would be perceived to an outside observer as maybe a mild or moderate stressor. They will overreact with extreme behaviors. So all of this to say that how we were loved in our earliest moments of life makes an impression in our brains and our bodies, and it can impact us throughout our lives. But we can enhance our brain body capacity for feeling safe by coming back to noticing, practicing awareness, that interoception, and becoming curious about our internal states. And then by finding our base where we can regulate, decompress, and find our feet. This routine is necessary for neuroplastic changes to occur. Then we can access the cortex, the thinking part of the brain, to help us choose a safe reaction and a safe other to connect with. Oprah and Dr. Perry discuss the importance of small moments in life where we feel the other person fully connected, present, and accepting of us. This is what creates the strong, enduring bonds in relationships. This is also why, in my opinion, practicing slow, mindful yoga is so valuable. It allows us to discover or remember connection within our own bodies, our breath, our hearts, and our minds. Yoga helps to balance the neurotransmitters as well as the stress response. It also reduces inflammation in the body and increases the vagal tone. Building new neural connections takes repetition. We can start with something really small like tuning into our own heartbeat or watching our breath. Then layer something else, maybe noticing our posture or stance. Then layering something else or noticing that if we soften or slow down our presence, what effect that has on our breathing and what impact it has in our relationships with the person in front of us. Neuroplasticity is the ability of the brain to rewire itself based on learning experiences or even injury. Dr. Perry says in order to change any part of the brain, that part must be stimulated. He says that one of the key principles in neuroplasticity is the pattern of activation. If we experience moderate, controllable levels of stress, this strengthens our stress response capability. In other words, this helps build resilience. I would say that practicing yoga, especially when we do cross-patterning poses, balancing poses, or static poses where we place our attention in one area of focus, this creates a moderate, controllable level of stress. If we can move in and out of a posture or continually breathe easily, even if our quads are shaking, then we are strengthening what Dr. Dan Siegel calls the window of tolerance. We are building that resilience. And this allows us to face bigger challenges because we have the tools and skills that we can turn to and return to again and again in the moment that ground us so that we can get back to our thinking brain. To close out this message, place one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. You can lower your chin to your chest, you can close your eyes, but just listen, just go inward. This is your home base. When you feel ready, you can lower your hands, lift your gaze. I just wanna share a quote from Bonnie Bainbridge Cohen. When we free our heart, we free our spine.